Hello, Gorange is on view, this time for our sale on the 5th of September. We're in the furniture warehouse having a poke about at what's arrived in. And if you need a big mirror, well, this could be the mirror for you. It's People enormous. Pass, it's enormous. Not 1114. It's not particularly old. Um, you know, it's in the 19th century style, but it's not of the period. But it has got beveled glass, which is a nice feature. What is it? Six, six foot tall? It is. Six foot and a bit, maybe six foot six, I would say. And really? Wow. <laughs> about six to seven foot in length. Gosh. You can turn it the other way up, of course, nothing stopped that. So um, condition looks okay. A few tiny little nicks, but not bad at all. So there we go, one whopping great mirror. Mm. Uh, if your name is Eastman, or your house is called Eastman's, or you think you're gonna open, I don't know, a chemist or something called Eastman's, then this is a sign for you, Look, one, 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 five. It actually looks original. It looks like an old, uh, yeah, proper old no, one. Yeah, 100% is an original. Mm. Um, I mean, Eastman's Kodak were camera people, but I don't think this is it. I think that's just a, a family business called Eastman's. Okay. Um, that nice Greek key border. Yeah, fun that. Nice. Good size, if you like large signs. Um, you mentioned this chest of drawers. I did mention which that. Which you can't chest see. We could do this one first, which you can see, which yeah. you mentioned. So this is um, probably French. It's certainly in the French taste and style. It's mm. lot 1112. Um, it, it's what we might call Louis XVI, or it really Louis XV, because it's a bit plainer style, um, but not of the period. But it's nicely made. We've got it a marble nice. top. We've got this rich, I would say, rosewood with maybe a bit of kingwood banding. We've got brass inset into these fluted corners, really nicely done. Mm. Handles, perhaps they slightly let it down in the crispness of the casting, but broadly okay. And you get four keys inside it, which is a rarity. Uh, and it all looks to be in good, clean condition. I spot one little nick of uh, veneer off there, but otherwise good. So that's a nice clean chest of drawers. Reproduction, but, but nice, and the period thing would be a lot more expensive. Mm. You also mentioned this. Yeah, I like the shape of that. That's 1106, it's a re-offer, that means it didn't sell the first time round. Why did it not sell? Well, it's not period, it's reproduction. So the thickness of the veneers, are they're a bit thinner than they would be in period because of course, modern techniques, you can cut them really thin, whereas in the old days, they were hand cut. Um, it's got some scuffing in places around the edges of the drawers and they, they're a little bit stiff, but you could get your wax candle out and rub yep. that up and down and that would probably help matters. Um, so, you know, it, it's an honest enough piece. It's got a bit of bubbling and ring marks on the top. What was the estimate last time? Can we see, peel back the sticker. It was in at two to 300. So this time round, it's probably in at about a hundred or so. That means you could probably buy it if no one else bid for about 50, 60 pounds. Um, and even if they did bid, what are they going to bid to? 100 or so. So it's not an expensive chest of drawers no. um, to be in the style. You're paying about a thousand pounds plus for the period version. So that's that. What else did you like? I really like that, uh, that really, sofa. You really like the sofa, don't you? Uh, I think it's. I think the shape is absolutely gorgeous. It, it's. I, I think that if you were able to reupholster it, depending on how much it costs to do so. Um, it's a really pretty thing. So it's lot 1028. It's a Victorian nice example. Feet. Yeah, it's got turned mahogany or walnut legs. It's got original ceramic casters. The frame is good and solid. Yeah, it's and nice. I suppose subject to your material, is it going to cost a thousand pounds or so? To I don't know. It? I don't know. I don't know these days. What, what, what I think it's it all about finding somebody who's really good at it as well, isn't that it? That too. You don't want a duff job, not with all no. this buttoning. It is, or you leave like it a... as it is and let the dog sleep on it. No. Oh, that's so okay. you. That's no, so me. It's not happening. Saving plans, tips for buyers. Okay, let's go down. I think we'll go down this next one here. We saw some other things we liked, but this catches my eye. But it's a re-offer again, a painted rectangular table. Look at that. It's got this sort of leopard spot border. These classical motifs in the corners. It's very pretty. And the stem, yeah. lovely. And theme in there. The camera's actually really picking it up well. Excellent, well on camera. Yeah. Um, so this suggests, this whole design of it and everything else suggests a sort of late Regency period um, with, I would say, the original top that may have seen a bit of redecoration, might not. Um, is it a bit low? Has it been cut down? Well, not obviously. 
Well, as long as I could reach you my drink from could it. Could you reach it? Well, you usually flat on the floor by eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that again was in at 200, top 1029. It will be back in at about 100 pounds or so. Well, that's a bargain. Doesn't, there you go, another bargain. If one, you know, you when you know. say Regency, when are we talking? We are talking round about sort of 1800 to 1820. Gosh. We're talking the period when George III was um, not fully compost mentis and therefore his son, the Prince Regent, is sort of more in charge of right. things. Um, Prince Regent, George IV, down at Brighton, spending all the money, building the Royal Pavilion, things like that. Gosh. Um, but yeah, generally an, an, er an era of slightly more elaborate designs Pretty. Uh, and what have you. But yeah, nice, interesting thing. That catches my eye. Let's mm. see what happens. Maybe spotted. Because not all these things get cheaper. Sometimes we, they don't sell at 200. You put them back at 100 and they make 300. So it, it it's just magic of auctions for you. Uh, carry on down anyway. We will go past. This one as well, sorry. But um, this one, this is a real for you. This mentioned is, this. This is the unsold um, show, isn't it? Yeah. It, do, it is. And I I'm, I'm really okay. don't understand. Because so. I think that that's... That was sweet. George the Third chest at two to three hundred pounds. Now it's lot yep. ten twenty one. Yeah. Why didn't it sell? The drawers are okay. Is the top later? I, the top somehow doesn't feel quite as good as it could. It's right. lost a lot of cock beading. Okay. So you're going to have to get that done if you want. And top's a bit loose and everything. But yeah, it doesn't seem dear at two hundred. No. So there we go. The we'll see. Of the It'll price. be interesting. Maybe it was just a, a, a week when they weren't so uh, keen on buying furniture. Maybe the weather was too good. Uh, we like back here this. I think this came from Job Dan's. This is lot. Oh, this is great. 1053. Yes. Uh, so it's fountain. Uh, we've got. We've got lots of bits. Elements. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, elements. <laughs> so if this is the top finial, then it suggests that having these plain cylindrical stems is original and ah, that sits there okay. and it seems to sit at the right level that the water would come to there so you wouldn't be seeing that so it doesn't matter that it's plain right um you've got a hole here for the spout yes so this is reflected again here where again we've got a plain stem but again the water level is to there so we're not seeing below there and then sitting on this nice big heavy looking foot yes for some reason there is an extra section mm. but it's it doesn't match it's got fluting and mm. it wouldn't fit inside this bowl so i can't quite see <laughs> how that was part of it whether it is part of it whether it's just a, there to confuse but either way this on its own is a nice thing it is and, it's uh, lovely looks more or less ready to go but a plumbing required finally now you didn't like this no. And you'll need to come this side. That's the thickness. To I'm... demonstrate. Yep. But lot 1007, why is it so thick? Well, because it's a reproduction, but the magic is you open it up and there you are. You've got all your socks and ties and stuff hanging. Uh, scarves and necklaces. Scarves and uh, diamond necklaces. Diamond necklaces. Um, oh, and, now and, I want it. and they're hidden there from the burglars and they're, they're, <sighs> it's not wasting space. You've even got a base drawer. So although it's a reproduction, it's nicely made and it's got that extra use to it. Um, so there we go. Should you want to sharpen any knives over the weekend, you've got a um, <laughs> grindstone there, lot 1006. Oh, that's brilliant. Put some water in and um, sharpen away, uh, saving electricity in the process. So there we go, there's something for everyone. As usual, we'll go and have a look inside the main cell room. So here we are in the main cell room and uh, it's an interesting mixture. I know I always say that every week, you but do. this time we've got quite a lot of bronzes. Uh, from a job of Joe's, some, some interesting things. So let's get into it. 1424, look at that. Nice darkly patinated bronze of a gentleman. It is signed on the back. Uh, I can't, mm. Luce, Lucchese, it is signed. Okay. Um, crisply cast, looks 19th century to me. We no doubt will have catalogued it more fully. Let's hope. Uh, yeah. Next to it, 1422. Look at him, he's rather splendid, isn't he? Uh, the uh, fisherman or seaman it's belgian yeah. i know that because it says on the back made in belgium ah, and right. it's signed uh dominier or something along those lines it's got but, a uh, again face. nice face lovely patination this this green and bronze color mm. uh the marble plinth may well be later it looks a bit newer mm. here again another one look 1420 the um harvester uh, at the end of the day by the looks of things i mean again nicely cast in the manner of sort of summer like 
uh, Hamo Thornycraft or somebody like that. This one is signed Mullen or Muller, H. Muller. Um, but you know, that's a nice thing, nice patination. Nice. Good looking, good looking item. Above it, you commented on this. Yes, that's. 1429, nice yep. Victorian game pie tureen. Lovely okay. colour. Good colour, uh, with its liner. Not marked, I mean, you see these in Minton, you see them in Wedgwood, perhaps this one is Continental or just one of the lesser factories that didn't mark, but still, nice colour, crisply done. Uh, alongside it, a lovely stone corbel or what have you, lot 1430, looks old, is it? We don't, I don't know, maybe it is, perhaps we've expanded on that. Door stops. There are door stops. Quite a lot of these coming up. 1417, these two dolphin door stops. Mm. There's quite a lot of truncheons coming up. 1433, all in all in hardwoods. We'll see a few of those popping up in lots over the next few weeks. Uh, there's some nice measures, 1435. So these are um, relatively lightweight, often measures are heavier. They're by the Oriental Metal Pressing Works Private Limited. Gosh. And the, the measurement is two sear, <laughs> and then one sear, and then a whole lot more sears inside there. With it, you get a number of these brass uh, sort of pill grading or grain measuring mm measures so you presumably you put the grate in and then whatever runs through it you can assess the size uh, quite a number of those that one looks asian um certainly scrolled or north african even but uh, so perhaps we're going to go in the middle and say it's indian um, but anyway another set of measures there so interesting little lot did i give you the number it was one four three five thank you across the way going past i love this you like that good to sewing silk a nice haberdasher's it's cabinet, great, isn't it? jammed full of buttons. It's got that lovely sort of colour to it, that toffee colour that we all remember from department stores back in the day before they all closed down. Lot 1440. Nice. Great farm. Uh, along here, so what looks to be a 17th century carved oak panel. Lot 1384, but we know about this, as the vendor told me. This is the, effectively the story of the mistletoe bough by Thomas Haynes Bailey. And the poem, the, in essence, they were getting wed. There they are, got married. Yep. Then they had hit the gin, trying out all the different flavours. Everyone got, had a great time, but then she, the, the lady, the, the bride said, she said, I'm weary of dancing now. Here, tarry a moment, I'll hide, I'll hide. And off she went to hide and she said, come and find me. And she said to her um, husband, Come and find me. And they searched and searched. It says they sought her that night. They sought her the next day. They sought her in vain when a week passed away. At length, an oak chest that had long lain hid was found in the castle. They raised the lid and a skeleton form lay mouldering there in the bridal wreath of that lady fair. Oh. So she hid in this coffer. Gosh. And the uh, Sorry, someone's phone. skeleton um, was found. Her skeleton was found. So it was all a bit of a disaster. So we know this isn't 17th century, therefore, because the poem was written in the 19th century. Very Victorian, but still a bit of fun, a bit different. Uh, carry on down, I see two nice Gladstone type bags. Yes, I spotted those. Look at this, really what lovely. have we got in here? Oh, lovely, I've been looking for a pair of those. Boot pulls. Oh, wow. Look, you loop it through the back of your boot, the loop, ah, and you pull your boot on, or, or two of them for yeah. riding boots and the like. Lovely, beautifully made, look at that. Steel and ebony. And inside also other things, bottles, brushes, stretch your gloves with those. So that's a nice case. With it comes another one in crocodile, which is always the desirable that's material. Beautiful. Uh, it's um, got a sort of fitted interior with some What's it? What's bottles the, and jars. Uh, Drew and Sons? Bone. Is it? Drew and Sons. Drew and Sons, yeah, good makers. Bone glove stretcher, not ivory, that's even beautiful. a diary and almanac by the looks of things. What so would rather you nice. Use it for nowadays. You'd use it to go go on your appointments with. Put your put your laptop in there. Cool, yeah. Uh, hand luggage on on EasyJet, <laughs> fits in the box container, Perfect. no problem. There Perfect. you go, there you go. That's what you'd use it for. So, passing on down, how about you that mentioned for a cracking mortar? Look at that. It's cast iron. It weighs a ton. It's lot thirteen ninety eight. And somewhere I've seen a really the, the the pestle to go with it, not matching, but it would fit it really nicely and. <laughs> Of course, I haven't put it down here, but we'll find it and it will come out in due course. So, you mentioned this, this light, which I find quite uh, amusing. Yeah, I don't want to dwell on that too long. But I'm glad about that. Fan light. You mentioned this cast oh, iron yes. door portier. Well, don't mention it. I want it. 
Lot 1373, well you have to outbid everybody else yeah. after it's been promoted. So there, that's cast iron, Isn't probably that French, lovely? 19th century. Yeah, it is nice. It looks like it's been outside. Well, it's certainly oxidised, hasn't it? Yeah. It's not going to rust as well, not any more than that. It's no. solid cast iron. Up here, lot 1359, boys smoking cigarettes. Always a popular subject back in the day. Carrying on down here, neither are nice. It's still all about bronzes, I did tell you that. Lot 1379, this chap is, the title is Don La Mine, in the mine, French bronze of a miner. It's not a bad subject. It's always in interesting, mining history and the like. We go past some more measures. These are better ones, 1348. Oh. Look, County of Southampton, 1812. Ah. And we've got a court, it says Court Winchester. And then we get Pint Winchester and half pint. And these are literally, in theory, so the excise man goes round and checks that the publicans and anyone selling anything by quantity mm. are selling the right amount. Fantastic. The one thing I'd like to have seen were touch marks around the edge that show that they've been officially inspected and certified. What do you mean touch marks? So you get little, a bit like a hallmark or a pewter oh, touch okay. mark either hammered in or sometimes lead applied and then it hammered in right um and you get the the uh in shows it's been inspected on whatever the interval was they're nice though um but they're still nice and they're lovely heavy sort of bronze bronze bell metal type material yeah good, good things those this caught my eye 1342 he's a bit stanley matthews isn't he i think he's slightly earlier this this laurel wreath or whatever it is a palm wreath um, perhaps he's more 1920s, 30s, but he's obviously a footballer. Um, well, I say that. Standard I think he's proud. a footballer. So 1342, yeah. something a bit different. Round the corner, more bronzes, walking sticks, watercolours, a truncheon, a sprung-loaded truncheon holder. Good grief. You strap that to your belt and it's like a quick draw. <laughs> See, bounce. Oh, love dear. it, love it. Lot yeah, 13, like, 16. Yeah, great. Toys for boys. Uh, it's a bit dark, I'm afraid, because this... It, yeah, who turned the lights out? Yeah. Another nice bronze drummer there. Bronze lion, it's repro, but it's, it's, nice. it's very nicely cast. Up here, I like this one, 1327. He's got a good strong look, hasn't he? He does. Turn him side on, old nosy. Yes. Um, it is signed. It's Professor Purcell, who was not a bad maker, who, who went from sort of doing traditional... 19th century style into a more sort of art deco -y style. Um, yeah, so that's a nice thing. I think it's about 300 pounds estimate, something along those lines. So plenty more bronzes for you. Glass domes to put your taxidermic mice under. Skeleton clocks. Interestingly shaped mirrors. You often see the, the circular ones, but that's an oval. That's a lot. 1292. Oh, we liked this light, didn't we? It's yeah, pretty. that's lovely. That's quality. 1262. Yeah. It's not big, but it is clever. It's, it's very, really very nice, easy. good quality Ormolu, heavy, nice quality cut glass. And, you know, diminutive, but um, works Works for, you don't have to have a huge place to put it. Finally, there's other things, but maybe finally, 1260, I really like this. I don't know if it's rare or not, but it looks to me to be an, an exemption from being pressed. So it talks about, um, this principal clerk, Richard Horn, uh, of the uh, Admiralty, I believe, who, who, yes, who's commissioned Her Majesty's Navy. And then he's saying this this chap who's a sailor on board HMS Foudroyant, which I think had connections to Nelson, Adam Waterhouse, um, for whatever reason, uh, now has a pass, now has a pardon from being pressed. 1763. Gosh. Uh, so I think that's interesting. It is interesting. Maybe there's loads of them and I'm... I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's interesting, even if there are loads of them. So if you're into golf and you, you want to drink, there you go, 12.57 for the uh, 19th hole. That's a nice bit of glass there. There's other glass in the cell. As always, there's Chinese ceramics, there's some silver, a pair of George III candlesticks over the back there that oh, yes. need, need significant restoration because they've been converted to um, table lamps. But uh, as ever, it's all here, jewellery as well. So uh, come along and see us. Have a good view. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.